Hello everyone and welcome to another video as we do have today a video covering Walmart Pajamas Theodore here with Amir. How are you doing today Amir? Um, really good as I recently hit Walmart Pajamas on my team and that game I think was a plus 200 RP. Um, not You don't usually see that. No, it's definitely not very common, but for someone like Walmart, it is actually a lot more common than you think to have these massive big win games, high TKs. Uh, Walmart actually is one of the uh, game breaking kind of like establishers for Theodore. Uh, he's been playing it since season one and has like seen the potential and like power of Theodore since season one. I mean, a character that has incredibly high uh, ceiling of like skill cap and a lot of things that you have to learn and establish before he becomes incredibly powerful. But recently, Theodore has gotten a lot of buffs and a lot of attention in a lot of different scenes, even in KR. So I know NA has also been making a lot of new uh, Theodore players, practicing him, getting ready for ERCS. Yeah, I know for, I think, last season's ERCS, he saw a bit of play as, I think, Ghost Electricity was starting to pick him up for their ERCS team. But this season, I think we've seen, uh, I want to say three or maybe four new players starting to learn Theodore, specifically for tournament play. And I think what I see Walmart do a lot better than many other Theodores is always the positioning on this wall. Theodore's entire kit usually revolves around where he places his wall how well he can play around it and i think that walmart pajamas is just so good at knowing where to place it when he can play around it and when he just needs to leave a fight oh for sure well actually i don't know necessarily if it's just leaving a fight but walmart's really good at knowing when to turn a fight there's a lot of times and i'm hoping we'll see it in this game where there's an iconic play where he'll start running because the fight's obviously looking bad he doesn't have his cooldowns and then the enemy team chases just slightly too long. He puts down that shield, throws out his CC, roots them, and instant kills the wipes whoever tried to overextend and chase him uh, just a second too long. Yeah, another thing that I have seen Walmart do uh, maybe a bit too often is walk out of a bush with passive, knowing that he's going to get the invisibility, and then use that to be able to catch people out because no one expects a random Theodore in the middle of a lane just invisible well exactly plus it's point blank it's really hard to miss and as long as his team is ready to follow him up it's very it's very kill security plus theodore is just such an incredible character in the sense that I, besides the factor of you know he has got high uh, high sustain damage high healing damage he also has high burst damage theodore can take someone from full to zero pretty easily if he can land his full combo yeah being able to hit e into w and r it's just so much damage. The spark nade just no one expects it to just hit you for 300 damage. The ult hitting you for an extra like 700. And then on top of that, you're throwing Qs, auto attacks, getting buffed by the wall. It's there's so much going on with this character in any given fight. Exactly. And I mean, again, it's not an easy character to pick up, but I mean, it's shown through a lot of like the stats and pickup rates right now, if you do dedicate the time to this character, it really does shine and shows the the crazy potential that Theo has. And I mean, one of the most impressive things is we talked about, you know, a lot of people are picking it up for competitive play because, you know, you have an organized team, you've got comps to play around Theo. Theo is a character that is very reliant on playing around his team. You know, really good to have that front, front to back kind of play style. People that want to stand in front of his shields. Uh, not people that are going to dive too far away from where his uh, area of effectiveness is because as soon as you leave Theo's shield, he doesn't have that effective range. So playing him in solo queue is a whole other beast of trying to get used to. Yeah, I think the only one other person that is known for playing Theodore somewhat will be One Circle, but One Circle is known for playing a lot of things. But also, it looks like in this fight, we're going to see... Our Theodore just ult forward just to get in range to be able to actually full combo onto the Aya. That is like that's something that only a Theodore master or I guess someone that has understood this character that's a, to such a high degree will actually do. Well, exactly. You don't see many people ulting just for the speed and the attack speed that you get from it. Most people want to use it for the damage in the combo or to run away, not to start really chasing a fight. 
well exactly and i mean again yeah this is this is this is a prime example of four four seasons of dedication to just you know, uh all kind of congregated into this play style that walmart has and yeah like you mentioned a lot of theodores they'll use their ultimates backwards to create space some will not only use it will only use it when they have a, a combo hit up uh, Walmart here really does know all the different good times to utilize his ultimate that will benefit him in the best uh, kind of case. Yeah, and I like the fact that he's just not walking too far forward here. As we know that Vanya, yeah, as we just use ult, and we're also versing an Estelle who can just randomly decide to jump on us and maybe deal a bit too much damage. Like, we're just playing such a good... We're playing really safe, but also able to pump out so much damage from the range that we're playing with. Plus, also playing really well against, uh, playing around uh, his Alonzo. Alonzo also playing really well around Theo, right? Alonzo just taking taking the heals. Uh, the first fight, now this fight as well. Constantly just in front of the shield, getting a bunch of effective value. Making Alonzo even more unkillable, which is already an incredibly difficult character to face. Yeah, being able to throw a shield down and then trust that your front line is going to play around it is... One of the scariest things about playing Theodore, because if you throw your shield down and then both your frontliners decide to run behind it, you, you feel very, very scared. But also, it looks like we're, we're getting a three into Blood Cloak, I assume. Yeah, Blood Cloak, which means that we will be 25% CDR, not going to be capped out anymore. But I, I don't think it'll matter too much, as no. Theodore can kind of reset a lot of his cooldowns by auto attacking. So it shouldn't change the course of any given fight no it definitely won't uh affect too much there especially just for the fact that yeah it's uh theater's auto attacks just get the resets allow him to have it he doesn't need the 30 percent. 30 percent is just i believe an extra luxury for them at this point yeah theodore at the end of the day is always going to be an auto attacker even though he does deal a lot of damage with his abilities and we're gonna see theodore being able to heal yeah we're gonna heal our alonzo as Oh my god, the amount of health coming back to Alonzo during this fight. It's, ex it's exactly that, right? It's that front to back pressure and like the burst damage coming out just to be able to like instant obliterate the front line and uh, yeah, keep keep Butterfly Flex uh, completely alive. Like Butterfly over engaged uh, from uh, engaging onto the Mai there and it didn't matter. Just simply that the, the, we weren't able to get past that Theo and the Theo was just able to completely clean up the fight. Yeah, the difference in a lot of team comps when you're bursting Theodore is that Theodore is not only going to do the job of an ADC, he's also going to support his front line and just make sure that they're near unkillable, which a lot of ADCs sadly cannot do. Actually, I do think that Theo usually favors matching up against front-to-back ADC comps because front-to-back ADC comps want to play it slow and whittle you down until there's a good opportunity. Whereas Theo is perfectly fine with that because he will win the trade every single time. Yeah, and another benefit is that Theo into a lot of ADC comps can still be hitting the ADC while the ADC can't hit him because of the bounce bouncing that his uh sorry that his wall gives, and he's gonna be ulting forward trying to be able to catch something. Yeah, he tries to get Alonzo that movement speed just to get that point off, but actually Alonzo missed it just by a hair. I what? actually thought Alonzo was about to go through that wall. <laughs> Same. I didn't think he was going to face plant into the wall. <laughs> That's a weird interaction. Yeah. And then the blink into the root. Oh, it's over for Aya. Oh, no. What? Oh, no. The Aya root. And then we're able to... Wait. Hey, I was about to say, no way we're not going down there. We get halted by the Lee Dai Lin, put to 1 HP, and... I think we're just going to wait for our team to back out because we will be reviving anyways it is day two still yeah it's day and two i mean butterfly's completely out it's fine our leon yeah i was gonna say if our leon decides to try and survive till day three to die then we might be a bit scared after that but we're already 10 10 team kills pretty good tempo and we already have a ghost bride i didn't even realize online for butterfly effect yeah the teams are actually already relatively stacked it's it's kind of, I mean, it's unfortunate that play happened that way, but it's aggressive plays like that that really lead to these high team kill games for Walmart. Like, that play looked incredibly well, and in most cases, that Aya probably would have been dead in a lot of cases. Yeah, sadly, we just didn't account for the ult coming out, and we're slightly too far forward. But I think in, like, 9 out of 10 times, that play just nets you an extra 3 team kills, and... And that was just one of the times that it doesn't. 
exactly and we'll have to see where it goes because i know uh right now i actually do believe that walmart is running yeah he's been run he's been on his adrenaline re run and he's actually been slowly convincing a lot of the na players to switch over to it so for anyone that doesn't know theodore is actually commonly right now been known to be using vampiric it's been believed to be the better uh, augment just for the fact that it gives more raw like stats towards theo allowing him to heal more do more burst damage uh also a little bit of vamp healing but statistically based on this here uh, adrenaline's been performing really well for walmart uh so who knows maybe maybe the extra attack speed and a movement speed that allows him to kite a bit more helps enable him um well it looks like we're gonna get a fight right here walmart being able to get taunted is very unfortunate but he just blinks back gets out of the bush gets the invisibility and then alts forward getting the attack speed the movement speed but like look at the sustain happening on the alonzo the alonzo just can't die it's crazy this is what i'm talking about a theodore that has a good front to back is impossible that alonzo was able to just heal and sustain through the entire fight yeah, that fight looked very winnable for the other team, but Theodore healing just made sure that it didn't matter. Exactly, yeah. And I mean, I, I, I myself, I mean, as you just saw there, I was the one that lost that fight. <laughs> I don't know exactly the best way to take on a Theodore. My only thing in my head is to get past that shield, but even putting yourself behind that shield doesn't necessarily guarantee the win of putting uh, pressure on the Theodore. Yeah, I mean, in that situation, it's like we're fighting Theodore in a bush, which is just very hard to do because we have Theodore blink backwards and then get the invisibility. Where does he go? We have no clue now. Like, the ability for a Theodore to use his passive extremely well is what separates a lot of good Theodores from great Theodores because we go from being a character that needs our team to, to, uh, to peel for us to being a character that can just peel for ourselves with our invisibility but also we're just going forward here blinking forward as well trying well, to find that something triple root again right it's it's just getting these catches and it lets alonzo follow up it's it's these aggressive plays i'm telling you there it's like walmart knows the limits of this character to a high extent and he knows that he can space better uh than a lot of uh a lot of players to be able to avoid getting jumped on like he, you know he's not scared of elena or uh Isaac jumping back and going on to him because even if they do he has both Leon and Alonzo to be able to save him it also looks like his Leon might be going a bit too far for uh for Walmart's favor he doesn't really want to go too far forward here losing out on that much timer I like to say timer is a resource but we like to have some of our resource still so our Leon is probably going to be pretty low on his timer Walmart wants to get a few kills to get that back up yeah we'll be able to try, try and get more kills get that timer back up but yeah i mean timer is a resource at the end of the day i just don't think alonzo or theo need to chase that they don't have the mobility leon does so if anyone's gonna get that kill it's gonna be the leon yeah. right. sadly he was unable to find it and we're gifted another tree here i wonder if we're gonna buy a meteorite to get the four score and slam it into our arms what? or if we just because i assume we're probably going blade boots well so yeah we oh we just give it over to our team actually being a team player <laughs> that's a that's a that's an interesting site there i would actually have expected the more items to go towards the theo but i guess if we look at the team we do we are our, our leon is actually a little poor right now so giving him some extra items might help be able to like enable the team a little bit extra kills because if if leon can land his combos he's absolutely going to be able to get uh, a lot more value for the team yeah because while we are the carry we need to make sure our front line is able to live long enough so that we can start pumping our damage out and yeah we're given the extra meteorite that we got and yeah the blade boots coming out all we have left is the four score for our arm slot and then we're good we'll have to see how the the game kind of uh plays out at this point because yeah we'll have to see where do they go like again just the aggressive plays the immediate like bush stealth into trying to get that root doesn't land it but it doesn't matter because the speed boost allows alonzo to follow up a nice nice engage as they're kind of just running down every team and this is this is very common this isn't like a one-off game uh, if you watch walmart's gameplays most times any game that he is in a high placement it's usually played like this where he is finding teams and he is running them down and they have no chance to try and survive whatsoever yeah the second he gets an opportunity he's just ulting forward looking for a play blink forward just 
throwing the root out, throwing the W, making sure that he can try and just find any sort of CC onto a, an opponent or give his team the opportunity to find CC so that his team is able to play one spot, lock him down, and, uh, and go for a couple extra team kills. Yeah, it looks like we will de-skill. I think it was enough to find this team over here. Yeah, it looks like our Alonzo is going forward, but sadly we have to be chasing an Isol who has placed a few traps down. Yeah, no need to chase over that far, especially against the team where they're a little bit already far away. Plus, they, they have control of this buy station now, and I believe that they were looking to actually get their final buy-ins. Because even Theodore, he's got enough money now. He's going to be able to buy that uh, Force Core and get his last upgrade. Yeah, getting this Force Core online is very massive because the difference between Sports Watch and Talarian Timepiece in terms of damage is very high. I think you start dealing an extra 20 to 30 damage extra per auto attack. And as we said, he's running the Adrenaline, so he's auto attacking a lot. And I also think the Adrenaline might be taken because Theodore is a very auto attack based character's character where his auto attacks affect speed at which he can throw his abilities because every time he auto attacks, he's taking 1.5 or one second off of his Q cooldown. I think a bit off the rest of them as well. So every auto attack matters, getting the extra damage out as well, getting an extra movement speed in the middle of a fight. It, it just is so much utility for this character that I don't actually think it's just for the damage. And yeah, yeah we're just ulting forward, probably going to look for the E and W. Yep. Unable to connect, but oh my god, the Alonzo damage over there. And yep, we just over here and heal the Alonzo, it doesn't matter. Now, one thing I will say about this play style is that this is 100% way more oriented towards solo queue play styles versus competitive play i now walmart does still play like this in competitive play he will still make these incredibly aggressive calls really aggressive plays trying to like push forward for his team but if you'll notice a lot as well there's a lot more defensive ultimates you know all being held longer to make sure that they can all backwards because there's organized teams that are going to be a lot better at being able to engage on to theo if he's not careful with his positioning so he has to have that extra resource to keep himself safe but the factor is, is that he knows in this, these teams aren't as or organized. And if he just presses ultimate and he runs at them, a lot of teams are going to panic. Teams aren't going to be able to handle the situation as well. And as soon as it gets CC, they're just going to get be able to get run down. And he really is able to capitalize on this to be able to utilize the full strength of Theo once he's on the advantage and the team isn't looking to try and get a good engage on him. Yeah, I think it's very nice because he's just ulting from a lot of the time out of vision. A lot of teams just get really scared seeing the edge of a Theodore ult coming at them. They're wondering what's following behind it. Like, how stacked are these guys? You don't really have the time that you have against other teams to start scouting them out and realize if you want to fight the team. The Theodore team will just be saying, yes, I want to fight you. I am chasing after you. Yeah, and for better or for worse, the Theodore's ultimate is a mind control device all on its own. Uh, and I've, I've actually spoken to Walmart and Walmart has talked about how it is a bad thing sometimes. Whereas once you get a, once you're on your team and you get a Theodore alt activated, your brain just says, go in, I'm going to fight and I'm going to win is basically the, what, what that ultimate says. But sometimes that ultimate is just used for different reasons and not necessarily to tell the team to full commit into a dive fight. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, you just, you need to use it for poke. And it's very weird occasions, but if you're in a, a long poked out fight and you just need that extra bit of poke to guarantee your position in an area, you, know, you just throw it forward. But here, we're actually going to see it go throwing forward for the extra damage. I think we're going to try and get the attack speed from it. And yeah, Dog and a Coat just down before we're actually even able to do anything. Yeah, I don't think you even got to press a button onto him, which is crazy to think. And I, I literally Butterfly on Onzo just, just two v one by himself, <laughs> went so far ahead and fought everyone. That's crazy. I mean, with the strength of some of these tanks, Theodore is just shot up in his uh, effectiveness because we're just able to say, hey, my tank is really strong and I'm really good at keeping my tank alive. I'm really good at dealing damage while my tank is alive. Wait, did they? Theodore might be a oh, big the, pick. It's first. They won. Uh, they, they... Yeah, they have won. Sadly, we just have to wait for the final team to escape. Yeah, and that, well, I mean, that is a prime example of if you're confident on the character, you can do a lot of incredible things on Theodore. 
All right, everyone, that's it for this video today. We'll see you in the next one.